When we think of periodic signals, we usually think about signals like sines and cosines, so trigonometric functions that have a single frequency. Some periodic signals look really simple, but they're actually made up of multiple frequency components, like a periodic square wave or a sawtooth wave. If we want frequency spectra for these signals containing multiple frequencies, tools like the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform are a little bit clumsy to use. In this video, I'm going to be introducing the Fourier series as a tool for representing signals with multiple frequency components. We'll also go through an example where we find the Fourier series for the periodic square wave. When thinking about the Fourier series, it's useful to make use of Euler's formula. This is because the Fourier series is available in two different forms, an exponential form and a trigonometric form. We're going to be focusing on the exponential form, but it's actually quite useful to be able to convert between the two different forms, and this is where Euler's formula is helpful. Euler's formula lets us write a complex exponential as a sum of two trigonometric functions. Likewise, we can use Euler's formula to write a cosine as a sum of two conjugate exponentials, and imaginary sine as the difference between two conjugate exponentials. Now let's get on to the Fourier series. In order to use the Fourier series, we need a signal that is periodic, and any frequencies that it contains need to be multiples of a frequency that's known as the fundamental frequency. There's also a fundamental period, and that's just one over the fundamental frequency. The Fourier series is then written as a sum of complex Fourier coefficients multiplied by complex exponentials e to the j, where j is the square root of minus 1, multiplied by the index k, multiplied by the fundamental frequency in radians omega naught, multiplied by time t. The Fourier coefficients are found by integrating the signal over the fundamental period after it's been multiplied by e to the negative j times k times omega naught times t. Let's briefly go over some features of the Fourier spectrum. With the Fourier transform, we got a continuous spectrum, but the Fourier series is discrete since it's only non-zero at the multiples of the fundamental frequency. So this is the first example we've seen in this series, where being discrete in one domain corresponds to having repetition in the other domain. We'll see more examples of this, especially as we start talking about digital systems. It also turns out that the Fourier series of a real signal has an even magnitude spectrum and an odd phase spectrum. So the magnitude of the index k coefficient is equal to the magnitude of the index negative k coefficient. But the phase of xk is equal to the negative of the phase of x negative k. Now let's consider the periodic square wave as an example for us to find the Fourier series. Let's consider a square wave that's centered at time t is equal to zero. It has an amplitude of a. It stays high for a period of tau seconds. And then the fundamental period is t naught. Setting up the integral to find the Fourier coefficients is not too bad in this case, because we only have one non-zero interval over the fundamental period. And the square wave has a constant amplitude over this interval. We just have to integrate the exponential. So we divide by negative j times k times omega naught. Once we apply the limits, we get a difference of exponentials that turns into a sign from Euler's formula. The sign argument is also in the denominator, so we can rewrite this as a sinc function. This is because the sinc of x is equal to sine of x over x. Basically, a sinc function is like a sine wave that decays as you get further away from zero. We can then write the full Fourier series as an infinite sum. If we plot the Fourier coefficients, then we see how we get a discrete spectrum that are samples of the sinc function. If the interval for being high is low relative to the fundamental period, then we would find that the sinc function varies more slowly. Now that we have the Fourier series formulation, we can start thinking about what happens to these more complex periodic signals when there passes inputs into linear time invariant or LTI analog systems. We'll be covering this with a detailed example in our next video. So thanks for watching this one. You can leave feedback in the comments and subscribe if you're interested in catching more of this series. There's also a lecture notes PDF linked in the description. See you next time.